You want to buy a gaming monitor. You watched the watch this before you buy a monitor video, and then started searching for monitor models. You like a few monitor models and the only difference between them is the response time. You decided to do the smart thing and buy the monitor with the lowest response time. But I have very sad news for you. Almost none of these one millisecond monitors really have a one millisecond response time. The most of the monitor manufacturers are lying to you. If you don't want to join the overpayers club, you need to know the information I will tell you in this video. Then let's get started. What does one millisecond response time mean and why it is not really one millisecond? Brands advertise GTG response time, which doesn't mean much on its own, to make their products look better. This leads customers to choose these monitor models. However, the value specified in the technical specifications doesn't actually mean much on its own. Additionally, there are many different methods to measure response time. Actually, the response time in the technical specifications of the monitors is divided into MPRT and GTG, but stores usually do not specify which one. While the value specified in the technical specifications is usually GTG response time, the other response time you need to follow for a real one millisecond experience is MPRT, moving picture response time. I can explain these two terms to you in the simplest way. Gray to gray indicates how quickly the next frame appears in the screen, and MPRT indicates how quickly the previous frame disappears. These two response times play a serious role in the smoothness of the game you are playing, and a latency in any of them negatively affects the smoothness. The high MPRT response time of your expensive monitor may affect your experience negatively. If you don't want to spend too much for a monitor, you need to know the importance of these two things. Gray to gray means how long it takes for the pixel to go from one gray level to the next. This refers to how quickly one frame is rendered after another. Most LCD panels have some latency in this area, while OLED and micro-LED panels have a faster response time. The reason behind this is the design of the panels. Moving picture response time represents how long a pixel is continuously visible for. Like GTG, it should be as short as possible. If this time is too long, when playing competitive games or following an image at high frame rates, old frames will not disappear when new frames are created and we will continue to see them. This causes blurring in the image. If a monitor with a high refresh rate has a high MPRT response time, a problem called ghosting occurs. Because of ghosting, you can see blurred copies of the enemy around the enemy during the game. This makes it harder to shoot the enemy. Brands often do not use MPRT response time in their advertisements, but MPRT is as important as GTG. Because for a smooth motion, it is not enough to create new frames quickly. Old frames should also disappear quickly, and MPRT specifies this value. This response time should be as short as possible. Now let's get to more important information. It is true that we look at MPRT and GTG response times when comparing monitors, but we should not forget that these two terms are actually a marketing strategy. In other words, these response times specified in the title or technical specifications are not very reliable and realistic. So how do I find out the actual response time? For this, you need to look at the actual test results in the reviews of the monitor model you want to buy. For example, you can see the actual response time of many monitor models from RTINGS or TFT Central. You can make comparisons between monitor models. The response times in these reviews are the result of tests with expensive devices. It should be said that these response times are much more reliable than the value specified in the title. Now let's move on to other important things about monitors. What is color bit depth? Color bit depth specifies the total number of colors your monitor can display. The higher it is, the better. If the content you watch supports features such as Dolby Vision or HDR, this allows you to get a higher accurate image with that screen. It is one of the most important factors affecting color saturation and naturalness in a movie you watch in the cinema. It is specified in the technical specifications of the monitors with values such as 8-bit, 10-bit. You can also see values such as 8-bit plus FRC. This means that this monitor is actually 8-bit, but with FRC technology, it can approach 10-bit depth. Of course, it does not have colors like a real 10-bit monitor, but it is much more affordable than real 10-bit monitors. Monitor panel types and differences. Another thing you should know about monitors is that panel design can affect response time. But to get a full understanding of this, you need to understand that not all panel designs are the same. Let's start by dividing the panel types into two groups, because this will help you better understand the differences between monitor panels. 
let's start with LCD and LED panels. Their working principle is based on converting the light from a fluorescent or LED source at the back into an image through a series of color filters and polarizers. This type of panel consists of many layers. LCD is short for liquid crystal display and refers to the crystals used for the pixels that make up the image. The geometry of these crystals determines the different types of LCD, such as TN, VA, and IPS. You've probably seen these terms if you've looked at monitor models. You can learn more about these screen types from the Watch This Before You Buy a Monitor video. But in short, IPS gives the highest accuracy, VA gives the highest contrast ratio, and TN gives the highest refresh rate in the low budget segment. The advantage of LCD and LED panels is that their technology is very advanced and they can be produced very cheaply. So if you're looking for a low-priced monitor model, you'll probably be looking at these LCD and LED monitors. The biggest disadvantage of this panel is that the color accuracy is low and the production error rate is high. This is the reason why you'll see issues like low color accuracy, low brightness, dead and stuck pixels on a cheap LCD monitor or laptop screen. Also, since this screen type has a multi-layered structure, you need to pay attention to the response time because the image is produced in a multi-stage process. The fact that the crystals and color filters that make up the pixels do not react at the same time can cause the high response time of such panels. They also can't show the black color accurately because they can't close the backlighting completely. Instead of a black color, they show a blue-gray color. If you see white lights in the corners of the screen while watching a movie, it is probably because the panel is LCD or LED. The only exception is IPS panels that use mini LED technology. Because mini LED panels use tiny LEDs that work locally for backlighting, they can reduce brightness locally and thus achieve higher dynamic range and color accuracy. Mini LED based IPS and VA LCD panels have been used in televisions for a while, but as of 2022, they are also being used in high end laptops. These panels can display HDR images that are normally difficult to display on LCD. The newest example of LCD panels are those based on quantum dot technology. These panels are more efficient and have more saturated colors than IPS, VA, or TN panels. But in terms of contrast and color saturation, they cannot compete with OLED and micro-LED panels, which I will explain in the next section. OLED and micro-LED panels have a much simpler design than the LCD and LED panels I just explained. Pixels are not created by blocking the light from the back with a secondary layer. Instead, diodes are used that emit light in blue, red, and green colors for each pixel. The combination of these three colors shows us the image. The biggest advantage of OLED and micro-LED panels is that each pixel can be turned on and off individually. This gives them incredible contrast and color saturation compared to their LCD competitors. So these OLED and micro-LED monitors can show true black and very saturated colors. They also require less energy, as the brightness of the screen is not blocked by any color filters. Another advantage over LCD screens is that they are thinner and more resistant to possible damage as they do not have a multi-layered structure. In addition, unlike LCDs, they have a response time of less than one millisecond. OLED screens are mostly used in devices such as smartphones due to their fast production, thinner and more efficient. However, in recent years, laptop manufacturers have started to include this panel type in their high-end laptop models. The biggest reason behind the unpopularity of OLED displays is that the pixels have a limited lifespan. If they are used at high brightness or high refresh rate for a long time, the blue pixels in the areas where static visual elements are located start to burn in. That is, they start to go out of the color range they should provide. This usually takes two or three years to show itself significantly. This is the biggest problem of OLED screens. Major manufacturers, such as LG and Samsung, support their products with technologies they have developed to overcome this problem. There is another panel that resembles OLED screens but does not create any burning problems, micro-LED panels. Micro-LED panels are essentially based on the same technology as OLED. The image is produced by diodes that emit their own light, and they have all the advantages of OLED panels. They can turn off pixels completely just like OLED displays and have a response time of under one millisecond. But the biggest weakness of OLED technology, pixel burn-in, is not present in micro-LED displays. This allows them to reach high refresh rates and brightness values. But one feature of micro-LED technology prevents their wider use. The pixels that make up this display panel cannot be manufactured smaller than a certain size. 
This is the biggest problem for the use of micro-LED technology in form factors such as laptops or smartphones. All right, let's finish the video slowly. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit the like button. If not, feel free to dislike. Stay mysterious until the next video. Take care and bye.